So let's go ahead and I'm going to actually jump into the program to give you a live demo of all these new features and how uh, you can use them and set them up in, in your version. So the first thing we're going to do is look at our insurance companies. So if you're looking at your insurance company that are set up or if you're setting up a new insurance company, um, the first on the claims tab, that's where you're going to locate the, the ICD code set that that insurance is going to use. So your options are either IC9, so if you have no idea when this particular insurance company is going to be switching to ICD-10, um, if it is one of those exception carriers, in other words, um, you can leave them as IC-9, and then as they're ready to switch to ICD-10 or as that's communicated, you could switch to ICD-10, and then you would put in an effective date for ICD-10. So for all of your, your commercial carriers, your Medicare, all of your all of your general carriers that aren't an exception to the rule, you could actually go ahead and start setting them up as 10-1-2015 as the effective date. And you could do that today, set those carriers up, um, and then save those for your insurance companies. And just to point out in the next screen, I'm going to show you how to set all of your insurance carriers at once. Um, and again, just to point out under your when you're setting up your insurance depending on your type so if there are again those auto injury or work comp carriers and their type is selected as work comp then that can actually help you when you're doing the kind of global setup for all of your insurance carriers at once so I'm going to go ahead and close out of the screen and now we're going to go over to your tools and you'll see that there's a new icon here for IC10 tools so the one we're going to talk about right now is the set insurance code set. So I'm going to go ahead and open that window up. And you can see in here, you have the option where you can either just kind of pick down through them individually, or you can do select all to select all of your insurance carriers at once. So if you're one of those offices where it's pretty straightforward, all of your carriers are going to be converting to IC10. You can come in here and say select all. Um, these are going to be IC10. And then I'm going to set the IC10 effective date for, you know, 10-1, um, sorry, 10 2015 And then you can do update selected. The other thing you can do is, again, if you are one of those practices that are impacted by, um, you have some work comp or things like that that you might need to manage, if you, if you click on the type field right there, it will actually sort by type. So I could say, hey, I'm going to update everybody except for these two, and I'm going to leave these two on IC9. I'm not sure yet when their effective date is. Um, but then when you hit that update selected, actually for my demo purposes, I'm going to leave this one um, practice as a January 1st, 2015. So I'm going to update everything else. Again, that's only for demo purposes so that I can show you the ICD warnings. Um, that are in effect now. But as you can see, um, just in a few clicks, you can update all of your insurance companies that are selected to be IC10 with the you know, October 1, 2015 um, effective date. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of my set insurance code set. The next thing I'm going to look at is the new changes with the diagnosis. So if we go to our list menu over here and we look at our diagnosis codes, you can see that um, your code that you have in there right now, um, if you've just recently converted or anything like that, it should have converted if you were on, in other words, a prior version of LIHTC and now you're on the new, the latest version. When it converted, it should have brought over, um, should have assumed your codes were ICD-9 codes. So these, the ICD-9 codes would automatically be filled out for you. Um, and in most cases, I think in most practices, the description or diagnosis code that you can see when you're entering charges was probably the IC9 as well. So you could, if you wanted to, come in here and map an ICD-10 code. Um, you could also start ripping off the Band-Aid and learning ICD-10. So if I wanted to set up a brand new code, um, just some of the features I'll just show you so in case you ever have to set up a new code. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set my diagnosis code as the ICD-10 code. So I'm going to put R11.2 in here, and then I'm going to put in my description. 
nausea with vomiting. Okay, and there's a new little copy feature here where it will automatically copy that down to whichever one you want. I'm actually going to copy it to both because I want to keep the, the same description even in my ICD-9. But now I want to map this ICD-10 code back to the ICD-9 code that I would use for it today if I were billing on it today using ICD-9. Because again, I could start using this now um, before my effective date so that I could start learning my new codes. So I'm going to go ahead and put in eight, sorry, 787.01 was my ICD-9 code. Now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Again, if you needed to um, set up any new codes or even edit codes that are in there, um, th those are your new options. And if you go into your search screen, you can see, this is what I was talking about before, you have the option to display you know, just, just codes that have the ICD-9 code field filled out. Or I could narrow down and say, hey, I just want to see my codes that have actually been set up with ICD-10 codes. So, that can help you again in the selection screen as well. And then here's your new search options up here where you could search by any of those um, different uh, filters. Let me go ahead and cancel out of there and close there. But again, that's not the only way that you can set up your ICD-10 code. So I'm going to go back to my tools up here, and we're going to look at our ICD-10 tools for create ICD-10 mappings. Uh, when you open this tool, it's just going to remind you again that these are based off of the gems and that uh, may not get every code that you need, um, but it's we again, it's a great kickstart for you. So just to kind of show you how the one-on-one -on -one mappings wor work, it looked at the ICD-9 code that I already have available um, that I've already entered in to my system. Uh, and then based off of those codes, it's suggesting or it's showing me the one-to-one the -one mapping. So if I'm happy with that one, and I'm going to just select one of them right now, you can do like a select all if you, if you want to pull all of your codes in. Um, I'm just going to do one so we'll, to demonstrate what it will do for you. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, select this one. You'll see that when I select it, it's going to create the new code as, um, again, the, the the code that I'm going to see when I'm entering charges is actually going to be the IC10 code. So I'm going to go ahead and say create my selected code. And then you'll see that it removed that one from my list. So I can actually come through, and if you've had light type for a while and it's time to clean up your codes, maybe there's some in there that you don't use anymore or anything like that, you can kind of go through them as you need to. Um, you don't have to tackle it all at once. So I did that one in, in nice because now there's just a to-do list of the ones that I still have left to review. And I'm going to go into my, um, my diagnosis list here, and I'm just going to show you what that did. So let me turn these on. So that one, as you can see, there's the code that it based it off of. Because I have this in my system right now, it found a one-to-one -one mapping for the IC10. However, it did not remove that one from the system for me. didn't add the code to it or anything else. So what it did do for me, and I'm going to turn that off, is you can see that it created a brand new code for me where the ICD-10, I'll go ahead and edit it, um, where the ICD-10 code is set as the code that I'm going to use or see when I'm entering in charges, but it's mapped back to that ICD-9. So again, I can start using it now and testing it now, but the correct code is going to pull onto my claim. All right. Um, and as you, you know, over time, if you decide now, hey, I no longer want this one on my list, um, you can come in there and make that one inactive. Okay. Which I'm not going to actually do at this moment. All right. And I'm just going to jump back over to the tools now, and then also show you the other tab, which is the the other mappings tab. So what's different about this, the other mappings, is this is an instance where we had one IC9 code on our list, but if I select that in the, the section below, you can see that that actually maps to two IC10 codes. So again, if I go ahead and choose this, and pull, I can choose to pull in both IC10 codes if I want, um, or if I know I'm only ever going to use one, or if I anticipate that I'm only ever going to use one, you can narrow it down. 
some of them are pretty straightforward, like I would probably want to go ahead and pull all those in. But there's other ones where, where like, look at insect bites, for example. What used to be one code under IC9 is now tons and tons and tons of codes under IC10. So it may take some clinical review, in other words, to determine do we want to go ahead and pull all these codes in or not. And again, you have that ability to kind of pick them off as you have time to um, and then pull them into your system. And it will not remove your existing codes. It's just going to add to your library with a complete ICD-10 code that's mapped to your ICD-9. Right. So you may, again, have multiple codes under ICD-10 that are mapped to the same IC 9 that you use today, which means you can start using those new codes today and your bills can still go out as they would. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you in the billing screen if we are entering in charges and payments. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter it in for George Adams. And I'm just going to show you here if I were to edit him and look at his insurance um, since we've already passed, since we're past January 1st, 2015. I went ahead and, and set the I set the insurance um, to bill IC10, but I'm going to actually sorry I must have updated that I did the wrong one. So I'm going to tell it one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do it for January the effective date to be January 1st, 2015. So. That means that if I choose a code today that does not have an IC10 map to it, it should warn us of that. All right. So we'll say OK to all this. All right. So we're going to do a new charge for this patient. I'm just going to put in my 99213. Um, under my diagnosis field, first thing I'm going to do is just select. You can see I'm going to select a code where there is no IC10 code mapped. And because I have my effective date set as you know January 1st and we're past January 1st, it's warning me now in red that I'm using a code that's not valid based on my insurance setup. Um, again, you would obviously be using October 1st, but just for demo purposes. When I try to save this transaction, it's going to tell me, hey, you're using a, a code that's not mapped for ICD-10 and confirm that you want to continue because if you use this code and you try to bill your claim, in other words, then and there's nothing mapped for ic 10 and the insurance is requiring ic 10 then we are not going to, it, nothing's going to print on that claim. It's not going to send anything. So again, it helps you manage or it gives you warnings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say no to that. And what I'm going to do is instead select a, um, a code that has both the IC9 and the IC10 code there. So we'll go ahead and select that one and say OK. And then I'm going to save that transaction. And you can see it saves just fine. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this zippy patient here. And I'm going to show you if I edit this patient and look at their insurance setup, you can see that under their insurance, um, the effective date is set to October 1st, 2015. As you know, if the date of service is prior to that, then it should bill out on my claims in IC9. So I'm going to kind of show you both options here. Um, all right, so we're going to do a new transaction for this patient as well. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to select um, uh, in fact, I'll just do the same exact code. So you can see based off an insurance that needs ICD-10 today and an insurance that has ICD-10 as an effective date in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we'll close out of there. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and print my insurance claims for that. And I know most of you are pro probably sending them electronically, but the same principle applies. Um, but just to show you what the system is going to do for that, I'm going to preview these claims here. Um, and you can see George was the, the patient that I had set up with the effective date as January 1st. And using that same code, it pulled onto my claim form the ICD-10 code. And my second patient there was 
um, Zippy, who had Medicare, whose effective date is not till October 1st. But again, I used that same new um, ICD-10 code in transaction entry, but it pulled on to the claim, the ICD-9 code. So again, that's how LIHTC can help manage um, those billing challenges for you. So as long as you've kind of properly set it up, you can actually start learning your your um, ICD-10 codes today and even start implementing them in your practice and your workflow so that you can breathe through October 1st and it's going to help manage all that for you. The last thing that I brought up or mentioned was the, the whole super bill issue. Um, and it may, you may find that it's necessary that you're going to have to replace that super bill with something electronic that's a lot easier to, to use to help you. The good news is we do have some solutions available. Litec MD Mobile, if you haven't heard about that or used that yet, um, the mobile option will actually let you enter in charges from your um, smartphone. And then we also have some LIHTC EHR solutions. And we're not going to cover uh, our EHR solutions in this webinar, but look forward to that in one of our upcoming webinars in the ICD-10 series because we're not only going to discuss how it can help you eliminate a super bill, but thinking back to our previous webinar about some of the other ICD-10 challenges and um, the impact it makes on the rest of your practice, um, we're going to cover just, you know, some of the features that will help you if you're implementing an EHR that will help you with all the IC10 to make it a smoother transition and also, um, and it can, again, EHR can also help you keep up with some of those other regulatory requirements that can affect your reimbursement. So look forward to that. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any ad additional questions, you can go ahead and call us at 877 Five four 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 three three. If you want to stay up to date on, you know, industry changes, new features, anything that's coming down the pipe, you can go to www.ascomp.com forward slash blog. Um, we are always posting there, even support tools and you know tips and tricks. Um, as well, you can sign up on that site to receive emails from us, so that you don't always have to check the blog. It'll actually notify you when uh, new announcements or changes are, are um, added to the blog. And then look forward to email invitations for our upcoming ICD-10 uh, training webinars. We hope that you'll continue to join us. Thanks so much. <laughs>